Hey guys, it's Marta. Welcome to the June Garden. Today I wanted to walk with you through my paths and show you some of the perennials that are in full bloom and they are one of my favorite ones. Let's begin. Let's begin here with salvias. Salvias are my huge love because their color is so intense and I absolutely love it. This deep purple is something that really catches your eye. If you visited my garden, that would be the plant that would catch your eye. Probably, maybe something else, but I think the salvias are so intense that they catch your eye immediately. This border is in full sun. This is a border that, that gets the maximum amount of sun in my garden. And here I have a lot of roses, white roses and pink roses. They are different heights and also a lot of lavender and a lot of salvias. And the salvias are now in full bloom. You can see some of them are a shorter type of salvias, which I love because they don't have a tendency to flop and that is always a problem in my garden because I have a lot of plants so I always search for plants uh, that I can plant in the front of the border and those compact ones are perfect. So the shortest ones are called uh, compact deep blues as the name says they are very uh, compact salvias. After they stop the blooming uh, I will shear them to almost to the ground and they will rebloom for me. Sometimes when they start blooming very early in the season, I can get three uh, blooming periods. But if they start later this year, that was it because we had such cold winter, we might get two blooming uh, windows. At the other end of this border, I have more salvias and but different types, they are a bit higher. Standing here, I can see hundreds of bees just feeding on those flowers and what I can say after I think 16 years of gardening I can tell that all of the pollinators love the color purple and I also love it. So we are all very very happy about uh, this garden because it has so much of the purple color uh, and I think uh, when I started my garden I started with a lot of uh, purple flowers and very soon we've seen that a lot of pollinators came and when the pollinators come the birds come and then your garden starts living living with wildlife and this is what you definitely want for your garden they will help to pollinate the plants and when the birds come the birds will help you or the uh, ladybugs will help you with the pests so you want your garden to be alive and to have have all of those beneficial insects and also birds to help you with your garden. If you feel like you need salvias in your garden, you'll probably ask what kind of space do they like? What kind of soil? What kind of lightning conditions? So salvias thrive in poor soil, but in full sun. This is what they love best and they want a soil that is well drained. They don't want to stand in water and you don't even have to fertilize them. I think they prefer it when the soil is not too fertile because then they grow very compact and their blooming is so intense then. I tried growing salvias in different conditions and I've learned a few things. So they don't like being in stagnant water. So if the water stands, they might rot. They don't like shade and they don't like to be crowded with other plants. You will say, Haha, I can see that they, sometimes they are. They, are. Uh, they will, of course, bloom. But if you want best results, you need to give them space. And if you uh, plant them in drifts, they will be next to each other. Then they will be looking their best because in the garden, it's always better to plant your plants with uh, like uh, like waves. So you, you make a grouping of plants. It always looks better. It looks very calming to the eye. It looks uh, really it guides your eye through the garden and I, I try always to uh, I, to plant plants in uh, five, sevens, elevens or if I can, I don't have that much space, but if I had a lot of space, I would go with like uh, 29 of uh, salvias and then something else to complement their color. 
In this border you can see a very classic combination of purple, white and pink. It is my favorite combination. I think it is very, very clean. It is very pleasing to the eye. And being on social media for so many years, I always know that a lot of people like this combination. And when I, when I see it on my Instagram, when people see this combination, they are very attracted to it. And also the bees and other pollinators also love it. I love it. Tell me if you like it too. Uh, I think it is very calming and this is what we need in our gardens. After a whole day of work and stress when we come to our garden, we need something tranquil, very calming and this color combo I think gives you exactly that. The salvias that I have here, uh, this is April night, uh, my favorite salvia. It's been here just, it's its second year. It blew my mind, I told you in the previous videos. Uh, it is very stiff and this is what I love about it. Of course, the color, the the blooming, uh, the blooming uh, behavior of this plant, but also that it is very stiff. Some of the salvias have this tendency to flop and they don't stand upright. And this one is incredible. So I love it. Also, I have Rianne that is a bit darker and other salvias that I do not remember the name of, but they are also very, very pretty. I wanted to talk for a second about this plant. It is not a perennial, but you will probably ask, what is this flower? This is Orlaya. This is a hardy annual that seeded itself two years ago. I was walking with uh, a bunch of dry Orlaya with seeds and some of them dropped on the ground. Uh, and as I love Orlaya, I didn't have it in me to pull it off when it just started growing in the gravel and it's been growing ever since. I think it looks very, very pretty. So I leave it here and I love Orlaya. I try to collect all the seeds and not let it seed itself here, but it is loving these conditions. These flowers are perfect for bouquets, but they are also, I think, a perfect companion for your salvia. So if you're thinking about sowing some flowers this uh, late summer, please buy Orlaya seeds, seed them. You can also do, it, do that in uh, spring, but I think, and I've seen after a few years of growing this plant, that uh, when it seeds itself and it's somewhere in the summer, I have bigger plants, better blooms. So do it this summer. Another perennial I wanted to talk about is catmint nepeta. This is a Mm, perennial that was the first one in my garden. I told you about it when I was talking about alliums. One of the first that uh, I started with and it always gave me such good results and it's everywhere in my garden. This is a plant that will also thrive in the sun. It will love poor conditions. It, will, it wouldn't mind uh, some drought it will bloom like crazy. In our city, I see more and more of beautiful perennials planted in the city. Uh, somewhere you have you have all the roads, you have roundabouts, and on the roundabouts you can see a catmint, you can see salvias, you can see verben, uh, verbena bonariensis. So these combinations thrive in that kind of spots. So when you have a lot of asphalt around, you have full sun, you only get the, the rain from the clouds, they don't water it and they just look like whoosh. you drive by and you just you forget to look at the road because you're looking at those beautiful plants. So if you're just starting with your garden, I would go with catmint. Uh, I've shown you in the video about Chelsea Job, how to prune it to get better blooms. I will shear it after it's done blooming uh, like uh, more than half of the plant and it will bloom again. And those parts that I sheared earlier as a Chelsea chop will bloom even uh, earlier. So you get them blooming all the time. These catmins in my garden are the oldest ones and I bought them just as catmins. They didn't have a name, but also in the garden, I have Walker Slow, I have Six Hills Giant, that is a very, very big cat mint uh, and there are also new ones called scats pajamas or Persian blue that are more compact and they uh, they don't flop that uh, as much as some of the old cat mints did you might ask what about the cats don't all of the cats from the neighborhood come to your garden and get very, very happy inside your plants i didn't ever have this experience but uh, i once asked on my instagram all of my followers to tell me if they have this problem with cats coming to their garden or their own cats getting crazy about cat mint. I have two cats and they don't really care. I tried bring, they don't go out, but sometimes I get them on a leash and I brought them here and I, I said, this is cat mint, you should get crazy. And they were like, 
I don't care. And they both walked away. But a lot of my followers said that they have two or three cats and only one is crazy about cat meat and the others don't really mind. Please write me in the comments if you have a cat and if it's crazy about cat meat or doesn't really give a damn about it. Behind me you can of course see a lot of roses. We have a climbing rose, some English roses and also the last of the alliums. I've cut down all of the alliums that, that had their flowers spent but those who that still look good, they are still in place. And also another perennial I wanted to talk about, a blue one. A blue flower is very rare in the garden, so I love when I have one. And there we have delphiniums. When you're searching for plants, you will often see that plants have blue in their name. Uh, probably that is why, because people are searching for rare things and a blue flower is very rare in the garden. You've seen anemones that are very very blue but also delphiniums. This is one of my favorite perennials. They are perfect. Those uh, long stalks with such incredible blue flowers are really something. Delphiniums really like very fertile soil. Uh, they like to have consistent moisture and they really, really need supports. If you leave them, be, let them be, uh, they will flop. But if you give them some kind of structure or even just one bamboo stick that is uh, close to the plant, I prefer uh, green ones because they, they don't show as much as the grayish ones. You give it one stick and you just take some string and wrap around it and then they will stand upright and they will be glorious. They have one nemesis, slugs. This is what you will read in all of the articles about delphiniums. I've never had this problem. Probably because the slugs and the snails are more interested in eating the leaves of my alliums. So when the leaves of the alliums are disintegrating, the snails and slugs are going there and they are eating all of that material and they don't eat my delphiniums. So maybe that is a great idea to plant them with alliums and uh, all of them their nemesis will deal with something else. Please let me know which are your top three perennials in your June garden. These are definitely mine. Number four would be Lupin. Uh, but I think now at the almost end of June, these are the three ones that catch my eye and I just can't imagine my garden without them. Thank you for joining me today. I really enjoy all of your comments and all of you writing me where you live. You are from such different places in the world and it's so great that we can share our experiences together. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.